Welcome back. We're going to try a Blitz, a Swiss tournament on the world's, I don't know, most favorite chess website, I'll say. Um, yeah, let's have some fun. It's ironic. I've gone through the trouble of hiding ratings so that I don't have to worry about it, but I do have an overlay widget that shows my ratings, so enjoy that. All right, good luck. Uh, let's see, let's do this. Who does this, right? There we go. I don't particularly care for three minute no increment, as in I've written like way too much saying that this is a horrible time control and please stop playing it. But this is what the players want. This is what the players deserve. So, more power to them. Um, Alright, so let's develop this and get the knight on f1. Uh, they're probably threatening this fork, unless I do something. Uh-huh. Okay, and then we'll just bring the knight out. Hmm. Bishop back. Bishop back again. Let's see what the opponent thinks about this move. Might, maybe I could have played bishop h7. That could have been fun. I could still consider bishop f7 or h7. Um, let's see. I mean, why not, right? Pots or sees a check. Pots or gives a check. But this is loose. So that's my target, this guy here. Um, interesting. Uh, I've not been planning this very carefully, but I seem to have a thing. Mm -hmm. I'll take one of these. Art tactics fun. Did the set of warm-up tactics I play help me anyway? Probably not. Um, I mean, look at that, right? This is not what we've dreamed of and hoped of, etc. So, this is still loose. That's good fun. Alright. We'll see where we end up. We're both playing much too fast. So that's good fun, too. And yeah, basically 90% of what we played here didn't matter because the opponent just gave me a piece. All right. Uh, as long as I don't do queen takes, I'm fine. So we're not going to do queen takes. If I'd done queen takes, rook f8 wins the queen. All right. And the king just steps away. And this is defended. Yeah, they could take with the bishop. No, I'm not worried about it. So, how's your day? <laughs> I mean, what am I supposed to say at this point, right? Like, uh, I guess I should shut up and play some good moves. Would that be a good idea? Hmm, I don't know. Look, we have a fun endgame, but I repeat myself, endgames are fun. Um, let's see, do they have a check here? <sighs> okay, I said endgames are fun. I'm not sure I believe it. For once, this endgame does not look fun. <laughs> I mean, it looks much more fun to spectate than to play. We'll put it that way. That's a free pawn. We're threatening rook d7. Hmm. They don't have a check, so I'll just go up here. Threatening rook e8. This game might be wildly unsound on my part. Um, they still don't have a check, so I chopped the pawn. 
Oh, they do have a check on d5. Maybe I don't want to let that one happen. Um, all right, we'll try to defend the checks and keep taking stuff. Knight f6 looks kind of cool. Oh, they've queen a2 check. I didn't see that, but it's not so easy for them either. Rook h7 mate is the threat. Rook h7 mate is still the threat. Rook e8 mate is also a threat. They don't have a stalemate trap because they have too many pawns. All right, we'll take one of these. Thanks for the game. All right, this is a Swiss, so I don't have to worry about blitzing to try to get the next game as fast as possible. That's kind of nice. We can take a second or two to breathe, and then we'll have our next round. Um. So, how's everyone doing? It seems we got a tough crowd today. Everybody's super quiet. I don't know why. Do I have to, like, start talking about current events? Is that what it takes to get people to say things? Perhaps so. Well, it looks like Black's going to win on time, and none of the game moves are going to matter. Yep, that's the game. All right, 20 seconds till the next round begins. Again, I sit on table two, I think. Oh, well, that's kind of cute, cool. We see this progress bar loading the round. Not to scale, I guess. Don't know why not. Might be my user style. Good luck. So, uh, let's play this, shall we? Bishop c4. Ah, oh, that's not bishop c4. Man, when do I get to play all the fun stuff? When do I get to play my prep? Never is pretty much the answer there, but it's fine. All right. Uh, so uh, let's bring this bishop out. Hmm. Let's see. I don't remember how you do this. Do you like put the knight on d4? Does the knight go to h4? What am I supposed to do? Uh, knight d4 doesn't look so terrible. Let's try it. Queen d1. Hmm. Um. <laughs> there we go. Never play f6, but h6 is fine, right? This is fine. Totally fine and normal. All right. So I'm going to oppose this guy. Oh, wow. Truly? Is this your point? All right, is knight takes going to happen? Nope. All right, I'll try to use my pieces. Um, you know, I just mentioned in the previous game how much I enjoy playing endgames. Let's play another endgame. <laughs> you know what? Just to make it more exciting, let's lose a piece before we go into the endgame. How about that? Yeah, that would just make it really exciting for the audience if I just gave away a piece. Sure. I'm already down a minute. What's a piece going to matter? Um, so 
So yeah, the key here is to not make mistakes. Play all the good moves, don't play the bad moves, and pray that things work out. So that's the plan. Never said it was a good plan, but you know, it's good to have a plan. All right, so assuming that things don't completely go my way, plan B is to exchange all the pawns and beg for a draw. Uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, got a pawn there. Um, Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Bishop c4 threatens to chop this, but gets loses my bishop. Um, Alright, we'll push the pawn. And defend the pawn. I hope you've been studying your end games. Okay, oh right, I'm in time pressure. I'm in very severe time pressure. All right, well this will be fun. Yeah, all right, you win this round. Well played. So that's why you don't want to give away pieces, by the way. It helps to play endgame. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was check. For a second there, I thought rook takes queen was possible, and I coughed at the possibility that, like, knight takes bishop there. So, I'm no longer winning the event. Assuming that there aren't, like, yeah, no, I'm in 12th place. Yeah, if we look at the top of the leaderboard, there's still a lot of people with more than one point. So I'm tied through for 7th through 12th. And these guys are fighting it out to see who gets the point here. So I'm going to be in like 10th place or worse here. We're going to have our typical binomial distribution where some folks win both games, some folks lose both games, and most folks lie somewhere in the middle, aka the bell curve. Um. Yeah, so I mentioned at the outset of the event, this isn't my favorite time control, but this is what people watch. So this is what I play. And then I lose all my rating points, and then go back to playing 3 plus 2 and get the, all, all the points back. So, yeah, for now, we'll just tough it out, see how far, far we get. You can watch my rating progress, I can't. There is a rating widget on the screen. I thought I think it's for rapid and classical. I don't think it even shows uh, my blitz rating. But yeah, I've concealed all ratings on the web page, so I don't have to care. It's just a number anyway. It's just for pairing purposes. So why should I care? What I might care about. If, is if a player has like NM or FM or IM or GM or something like that next to their name, then maybe I should like play serious openings and try extremely hard to win the game. Um, understanding that if I don't like give it my all, that I will be absolutely demolished. All right, so hang on. 
Yeah, we'll take that. Often taking on e4 is kind of inadvisable. Here, the alternatives look far worse, so we're going to pick this. Oh my goodness. What a generous move. All right. Are they going to take this with the knight? Knight takes, knight takes, queen h5, mate is the threat. f3, winning a bishop, is the other threat. Thanks for the game. That's the game. So, yeah, if you try really hard to win with black, sometimes you'll overpress and things will explode in your face. Uh, we saw the previous game, I lost a rook due to being more than a bit careless. This game, my opponent is still in the process of losing their bishop. Um, yeah, I'll take it here. And yeah, I just win. There's not going to be much more to it. These days I've taken somewhat of an interest in shogi, to say the least. Um, because, you know, winning a piece, losing a piece doesn't necessarily decide the game. Chess is kind of cruel in that regard that it's extremely hard to come down from a material loss or to recover from a severe material loss. And most material losses in chess are quite severe. Um, so yeah, in Shogi, it's much more exciting. And I would encourage you all to give it a chance. But yeah, chess and shogi aren't the only strategy games in the world. There are many other strategy games. Try them, see which ones you like, etc. The world is your oyster. Mm -hmm. That's a fork. All right. I guess rook takes is the stylish thing to do because then I'll have a queen there and a rook there, and you'll wonder how you get this position where there's two pieces checking the king. So, uh, should we spy on these guys? Oh, never mind, they finished. Should we spy on this gentleman? All right. So they're fighting it out for eighth place in the tournament. Um, huh. <laughs> Curious, the player who had the highest rating going into the event is now seeded number 17, or ranked number 17, by tiebreaks. Who'd have thunk? Who'd have thunk? How's my overlay look? All right, nobody said anything. We're going to put a quote out there just to make it fun. Assuming I can, can type. There we go. So that's some of the joy of Shogi. There's cute artwork, etc. Um, yeah. What else can we talk about? Here I am rambling to an audience of like 14 folks who just haven't said anything. And I don't think I muted the channel, so this isn't one of those contests Although I will be doing one of those soon, but I'm not doing it right now. Um, there's some contests where I will mute the channel and then um, be playing a very, very serious competitive game. Uh, here we're just kind of playing three minute blitz and whoever wins it wins it. And, you know, pretty low stakes. Um, I see that the Lee Chess Marathon is scheduled to start next hour. Many players will be trying this event. I'm a bit surprised that there aren't more people broadcasting this hour. And I'm curious how many will be broadcasting the next hour. I don't know. So, is this going to come down to one of those time scrambles where it's just a question of who can move the mouse faster? 
C5. Oh, well, I guess that works. Actually, that's better. Rook D2. Use the king. Almost always you need to use your king in these endgames. Um, sometimes it's too dangerous to use the king, but then you're probably not talking about an endgame. There are very few endgames where you can fight the game without using your king. On the other hand, if you are using your king, you very well uh, could get forked like that. So watch out for forks. The knight in blitz often proves to be an advantage. Who'd have thunk? Oh, there's a Fide Master in the tournament. Oh my. Good luck. Here we go. We've got to be on our best behavior, at least until I know that there's no chance of me getting paired against the Fide Master. Um, yeah, so we're playing in Zen mode, so I cannot see who my opponent is. I don't have to worry about it, I can just play my best game. Whether it's um, a complete beginner or a total expert. Um, I have my doubts about this F3, though. Grandmaster Feingold says never play F6. He didn't mention F3, but I don't think he had to. Um, it's kind of implied. Okay, what the hell? Let's do this. I'm sorry, but even if I'm trying to play good moves, we're still going to do this nonsense. So, yep. Uh, I prevent pawn d4. I continue preventing pawn d4. There we take it. That move's called en passant. It refers, capturing, refers to capturing a pawn on the, in the middle square that it just stepped through as it was making its double move. So that was a compromise that I think was necessary, otherwise endgames would be broken in some pretty weird ways. So that, I assume that was introduced around the same time the pawn double move was introduced. I don't know though. A little curious. But it seems like a useful balance to have that rule to offset the pawn double move. Otherwise, we'd see some really wonky endgames. Um, all right, this knight. You know I want to take the knight, but my bishop is so amazing. I can't do that. I can't bring myself to do it. So instead, um, we'll assume this is drilled into the square and not moving anywhere. And I'm preparing this and that. Um, that's a fork. Knight e4 is actually... I don't know if it's a response to this or not. No, the queen's defended. So... I can drop the bishop back. Bishop e7 seems like the best square to drop it to. So, yeah, unless I've missed some horrible shot, I think I'm fine here. Um, it's a bit annoying that my rook doesn't have many squares. But yeah, they stop pawn... Okay, I have to stop commenting and start playing faster. They stop pawn h4. And my entire attack is kind of banking on pawn h4 being played. Um, let's defend the rook. Oh, right, pawn h4 was my idea. Not right now, but, you know, soon. Mm 
once the knight moves, I can start doing other tactics like bishop e2 and knight somewhere eventually. Um, that's the plan. Either that or just win on time. Am I taking a knight for free? Yeah, it looks like I accidentally trapped my opponent's knight and they're stopping to think about it. And I'm stopping to think about why they're thinking about it. And they're thinking about how much I'm thinking about their thinking about it. Etc. So. But yeah, what do they do in this situation where I've constrained most of their pieces? Pawn b4 is kind of interesting, but only for a fleeting moment. Alright, we'll take one of those. And attack the rook. And then queen b8 wins another... Oh, never mind. They stopped it. Um, that's a fork. Yeah, when you defend all your pieces, uh, your opponent is always looking for a move. Um... It's a bit annoying. Uh, again, I gotta keep moving. I keep forgetting I have no increment here. So I have to play quickly. Uh, let's check. How many pieces can I take? Thanks for the game. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done pre-moves, hasn't it? I've played a lot of Shogi, and in Shogi you don't need to pre-move. <laughs> in Shogi you really wouldn't want to pre-move, well, in most situations. Maybe there's some where you would. I haven't even thought about it until just now, but... Ooh, white loses on time. Oh, that's so horrible. Because white's completely winning there. But Rick takes... Oh! White does not lose on time. That is now a draw. All right, white found the oh, queen mate. Nice. I forgot to check. Who was my opponent last round? Not the Fide Master. Oh, the Fide Master lost on time or otherwise lost their game. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, not everybody's great at three minute. It's something you got to practice and learn. Good luck. But yeah, unless I have a flawless performance, I'm going to get paired with that master eventually. And even if I do, like, eventually we're still going to get paired somehow, because there's not sufficiently many players to justify, uh, I don't know, denying him uh, the pairing with me. If there were tons and tons of players in this tournament, yeah, somebody else would have... Uh, I don't know. There'd be other folks to pair him with. So, I'm going to play c3 and bishop g2 and play this like a c3 Sicilian, I guess. But I guess this also has pawn h4 in it, just for fun. Um, so c3 looks useful, especially if they play knight c6. But if they play knight d7, my d-pawn has already fought back, so I see we have the same idea here. Uh, Alright, I'll just do this and bring the knight out. Yep. Fun times. Super fun symmetric positions. Of course I'm going to lose this somehow. And it's going to be super embarrassing, but let's not think about that just yet. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. They're planning f4. It's not even subtle. I'm pretending it doesn't matter, because, you know, if I happen to be correct that it doesn't matter, and they play it, then it's good times for me. But, um... Yeah, if I'm wrong, it's going to suck. All right, I guess they burned a tempo moving the queen. 
So I'm okay burning a tempo, protecting against f4. Um, what's this? All right. Uh, what to do? I don't know how pawn structures work. C4 looks fine, right? Hmm. hmm. Okay, this looks like the board is locked. And then both of us are looking for space. But I have space and they don't. So, mm -hmm. just keep moving, just keep moving. Oh, that's fine, I guess. It's a tense position for sure, but I don't see what they do next. Wow. Is that right? Okay. I almost traded two rooks for the queen there, but I don't think it does anything. Um... <laughs> ah, why exchange pieces when I can just lose a piece? <laughs> Truly, that's my genius move of the day. <laughs> oh, that is a wild sacrifice that I had not intended. Oh, okay. Well, we're all over the space now. Um, Yeah, let's take that. Sure. This looks sound. Why not? Ah, this is not necessary. This was so extremely not necessary on my part. All right, whatever. Uh, I don't know how to play this. I'm a genius. I guess I'll take that. Sure, let's take that one too. Thanks for the game. So that was me beating somebody who probably had a lot of points. Three wins versus, well, I'm I now have four wins. So that puts me in first. Oh my goodness. Thank you very much for such an enthusiastic support of the EFF. You know, they're the leading nonprofit in the U.S. defending digital privacy, free speech, and innovation at EFF.org. Thank you very much for supporting such a charitable cause. I promise that's going right to them. That's not going to me. So thank you, Reclusive Writer. Yeah, I admit, when it was first announced that you could put charities on your live stream, that very day I was immensely excited to uh, put out uh, this advertisement for the EFF. Because they are such advocates for causes that we all care about. Um, yeah, so thanks again.
I'm glad to see that we can affect good change in the world together. Castle. Oh, that's not castling. <laughs> oh, what's it take to get somebody to fall into an opening trap these days? Uh. <laughs> hmm. But yeah, without groups like the EFF advocating for consumer causes, we probably wouldn't... It would be much harder for us to have a leech us today without the EFF. It could still exist, but... Um, yeah, it's really the technologies like Git and Linux and other free software innovations that our collaborations between folks that you know build the backbone of the internet and make this as great as we know it to be so all right this is amazing um i'm gonna be that jerk that doesn't trade the pieces Let's see. I'm guessing I'm pl probably playing the Fide Master this game, if I had to guess. Because they're moving very quickly every single move, and I've not seen a mistake from them. So I'm probably going to get dunked on here in just a few moves. Um, knight c5 is the idea. They stop knight c5. Um, let's go back. That's a free pawn. That's another free pawn. Uh, e5 would be hanging if I moved that. Knights are tricky pieces. Knights are extremely tricky pieces, I say as I hang a knight. Alright, but it's fine. Back we go. Alright, what happened there? The flagship. I see. Interesting. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what more can I say about the EFF that obviously you can go to their website see their about page and look at all the charitable causes that they're part or the, all the things they help with they do advocate for net neutrality the right to repair uh, and other causes that we all are quite passionate about. But their advocacy, I don't think, is limited to the U.S., even though they are U.S.-based. So, yeah. Yeah, they're an awesome, awesome organization. And I was mentioning them even before Twitch made it possible for folks to um what's the word uh do the donations directly through the website like i think i had that section on my profile about down there even before um this was possible but uh yeah now, some people note that there are some particular charities that they personally disagree with. And that's fine. People can have their opinions. Um, correct as those opinions may be. 
uh, but still. The uh, upshot of this being a possibility is that um, some good organizations like the EFF are capable of being supported through the website as well. Also, I think the EFF are 501c3. You might want to check on that. I'm not a lawyer, not a tax accountant, etc. But yeah, if they happen to be one, then that could also be considered for tax purposes. But again, I don't know. So you'd want to check on that. I promise I'm not like being malicious and just making something up for the sake of trying to like solicit extra donations that again don't go to me. Um, I'm informing as best as I know how. Um, I did mention on my live stream I also like use and you can see this in the about section I use liberation fonts on my display. I think I have Chatty set to use those um, in that widget. Hopefully I've set up correctly, although it's been a while and I've not checked on it. But you can install these free beautiful fonts that are both monospace as well as variable width fonts. Um, uh, which are available under the Liberation Font License. So, next round begins momentarily, and I can stop stalling and start focusing on my moves. Knight of six, nope, no knight of six this game. Yeah, I'm quite concerned that here I'm probably going to get paired with the Fide Master imminently. We'll see how it goes. Um, oh goodness, I don't want to play the London. I wanted to play Bishop G5, damn it. <laughs> Alright, you know, there's a game. That's a move, maybe, maybe not. It's fine either way. But yeah, this indicates some aggression from my opponent, so... That's a target. See that target? All right. Um, this is another target. Yep, so they break my pin. If they castle, I have 96, so they can't castle there. Or if they did, it would have consequences. Um, queen's no longer... Yeah, what the hell, let's try it. This is hanging. I think the opponent got more than they bargained for here with my ridiculous opening. Um, so, yeah, playing pawn a5 in combination with all these other moves and playing f6, you might have gotten yourself in a bit of a tight spot here. Um, so... I got the bishop, I got this knight, all right, they're not going to let me get away with anything here, so, hang on, let's drop the bishop back before I hang something, mm -hmm. there's always time to hang stuff later, all right, and then, yeah, we'll use the bishop to hit this and see how they defend. All right. They don't. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's remove some of this firepower here. They have to take my queen. And then I can take this. And if rook b8, I take a rook, so they have to like throw in bishop or knight e2 first, and then knight takes, and I don't know, this is kind of a mess. Um, so. 
So yeah, I don't know how to deal with this situation. I'm going to try to mop up this pawn and assume that I get a draw. Um, unless things go horribly wrong. I might also try rook c or rook a to c1 uh, if I'm feeling feisty. F2's hanging. So yeah, I'm in. If I can exchange pawns on the queen side and play pawn g4, I don't think they can win it. Um, okay, we'll take this pawn. And then play the rook up here. Interesting. I think I have to play g3 here. And yeah, this is not the world's best pawn formation ever. But the question is, can it hold? That's the question. Answer, I don't know, man. Doesn't look easy. If king g7, I can attack the pinned bishop. Oh, wow. That I did not expect. Maybe I should have expected it. Um... Hmm, I'm in time pressure. I missed a shot. Oh, wait, no, the shot didn't work, though. Good game. I play with an increment. All right, so we lost to Greenwood 26. Congratulations. How many rounds do you think we're going to have? I know it says 15 rounds, and we do have enough players to support it. But if all players get paired against all prospective opponents such that the top end of the tournament is decided, then there's no need to play all the games. So, do you suppose that we're going to end up playing all the games or not? Also, how many people are going to drop out this and join the Lee Chess Marathon, I wonder? Um, we'll see. Alright, Benko time? That ain't the Benko. Who studies these openings? <laughs> Who studies these openings? Or is the whole point here that we're trying to get something that's not in anybody's opening book? Is that what's going on? Sure feels like that's what's going on. Ship e2. And I can play knight e4 at my lead. Oh, c a5 first. Raymond Keen on his King's Indian book, I think, mentions how you could get like a5, knight c5. And stuff, but you have to play a5 first. That way this cannot be attacked. And this knight just sits here for free. Um, then I guess we pin this. Uh-huh. All right. And yeah, they have the bishop pair. I have a beautiful position. Um, I'm tempted to take the knight, honestly. 
But maybe that's just because I'm crazy. Let's defend this. Oh. Alright. Well, yeah. I'll take the knight. Sure. That's an easy decision. Now I don't have this space problem. I've got all the space in the world. So, next I'll pile on this guy. Uh -huh. I don't know if queen b4 is crazy or not. Um, Alright, so this feels like the fun thing to do. Let's do it. My bishop exerts an influence over the entire diagonal. Um... Oh, this didn't work the way I thought. Whatever, let's do it anyway. That's just perfectly safe. Nothing could possibly go wrong here. Alright, damn it. Well, um, fine. You want your draw? I can't stop you. So, looks like we're going to get a draw. I only have a choice here. Bishop c3 is just such a terrible position. Okay, so they back out of it. Yeah, they still have a better position here, I think. Um, hmm, let's try this. I'm quite suspicious of it, but... If I don't try something, I'm just going to lose. And then they have the ability to exchange bishops and get rid of my best attacking piece. So I can remove their best attacking piece, and we'll see if we have anything left at the end of this. Pawn b4, I assume, right? With the knight e4 is kind of cool. Oh, never mind. Um... My knight covers this, so let's just hit that directly. Maybe rook c7 would have been smarter. Um, maybe rook c7 would have been a whole lot smarter. Alright, we'll defend this pawn just in case things go horribly wrong. Uh, oh. I should have foreseen that. Alright, Rook C7 gets played. As promised. And I, I was thinking of doubling the Rooks on the C file. But given how my opponent's doubling on the B file, I might have to change my tune here a bit. Alright. So I get a free pawn, and then I go back. Um, do I do rook takes? Does rook takes win? Rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, takes, rook b3 does not win. So if I want to try to win this, I've got to play this way. Or just flag them, but there's no dignity in that. I'll try playing some good moves. This is hanging. This is still hanging. I'll go back. What kind of Twilight Zone have I walked into here? Hmm. Shit, I don't know how to play this. Hmm. 
Thanks for the game. Oops, didn't mean to click that. I'm just trying to click the row in the grid to see who I was playing. Three minute is somewhat of a joke in cases where players just shuffle the pieces and see who can shuffle the fastest. I seem to have relearned how to play this joke of a game. That is three minute without an increment. So, we're getting back into it. Uh, let's see. Four knights. Oh, okay, this time we're going to play... I mean, I guess last time I tried to play this right, not knight of six. D4. Yeah! This is the real D... Oh. What? Is this an opening? I don't remember this one. Hey, let's make an opening. <laughs> There's an opening. Look at that. Three pieces, or three pawns for a piece. Totally sound. Opponent's completely out of book here. I don't even care what happens. I got to play an opening novelty that probably will forever remain a novelty because it looks extremely dubious. But I had the opportunity to play it, and I played it. All right. Ah, oh, yeah. I should not have done that. But it was fun. For like the two seconds where I played this ridiculous opening idea, it was fun for that those two seconds. And now we're gonna have to suffer the rest of the game for having done something original. It's gonna be fine. Maybe. Probably not. Um, Alright, so now my bishop is blocked by my pawn. Let's see what they do. Make a little threat. A little innocuous threat over here. That, you know, they could just play a lot of things there, but that's one thing they could play. It deals entirely with my threat. So, oh, this is funny. If this knight moves, then maybe I have a shot against the corner rook. The knight moved. <laughs> what are the odds that this actually turns out? Oh, this, There's no way this turns out in my favor. Odds are like zero or less than zero. Like, they'd have to move this rook at e1 away and forget about this for me to have any chance here. It's not happening. It'd be funny, but there's no way. Alright, so let's unblock my bishop. Continue making threats against the king. Continue praying for a miracle that just, like, isn't possible. Um, and, you know, we've done our best. All right, so next. Yeah, I mean, they've got knight e5. And then I've got bishop e4. And maybe there's something there. Almost certainly not, but maybe. Um... Mm hmm Okay, and then we'll attack the knight. Okay. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm making all these moves up. It's not easy. Um... How about this one? Is that a move? <sighs> this is so goofy. I wonder when they're going to have enough of my shenanigans here. All right, so there are more tactics. 
they could sack a rook here in order to sack a knight there to do stuff, but it's nuts. I wouldn't. Um, my rook's hanging. I just don't know anymore. I could walk into a triple fork. Oh, here's another fork. Now the rook on e8 is completely hanging. Knight f6 just wins an exchange. They're not interested. It's not enough. All right, let's step out of these tactics and into other ones. I guess I'm finally threatening pawn f5. So that's my first real... Oh, this is hanging. <laughs> now I have to try to move the pieces faster than the opponent. That's the plan, right? That's how you win at three minute? Oh, never mind. All right. Well, so much for that idea. So, yep. Tie break of 27. That means we've got some good opponents. I don't know if that means I've beaten good opponents or lost to good opponents or what. I think the latter, but I could be mistaken. Anyway, it wouldn't surprise me if rating-wise I'm down like 50 to 100, maybe 150 points on the event. Um, how many rounds are there to go? Still six more rounds. And the marathon, the Lee Chess Marathon's already started. I'll use this as my excuse not to play in the Lee Chess Marathon. How about that? But yeah, it's... I'm surprised. Like, the Twitch chat interface, I assume, is completely broken. Otherwise, somebody over the past hour would have said anything. I don't know. It could be completely on my end, too. I guess I'll take a look at things sometime and ask around. All right, good luck. Let's play pawn e4 for once. Oh, welcome. Thank you. You have won the best comment of the live stream thus far. Congratulations. There's no prize other than honor. Well, that and your comment could be featured in a YouTube video. Um, depending on how many other people say how many other things, your comment might be there for quite a while. So I'm threatening this and then this and oh. Okay, so I'm playing this and then this. And just gonna win the game? Sure. Alright. I guess I'm okay with winning the game. Um... No, I mean, they have to defend G2 here, right? So... Yeah, obviously I saw this coming. This is why I vacated the E4 square long in advance. Maybe I should have played knight d1. I don't know. Oh no, my pawn. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I guess maybe if you just like put on a funny voice and a funny face and these sorts of things, these are the things that draw the chess community together. The simple things. Oh no, my something. Alright, so... I guess we'll do this. I just noticed that if I do move the knight, um, they're going to have bishop c3. Okay. Well then... Um, sure. I guess we're going to exchange queens on c3. Which is... I don't think that's what they'd intended. But I don't think they have a choice at this point. They blocked this bishop. So this pawn on c3 is just going to be a problem for them. Um, 
I don't know if I'll be able to snipe it or not, but oh shit. F5 is a move I should have played. <sighs> now, oh. Well, I'm not dead anymore because they gave me the bishop back. That was extraordinarily generous. Um, yeah. I have no idea where we're at now. As long as I play knight f1 and don't get mated on e3, I'm fine. Um, don't even have to play knight f1 anymore. Nice. Okay, take one of those. Um, mm, this sucks. <laughs> oh, this is so bad. Oh, this is so bad. Oh, wait, I have rookie too. We have to try rookie too. This is so bad. This is amazing. How did I get such a terrible position? Even for me, this is up there. Like, all of my moves instantly lose. That's how you know your position's not great. Um, sure. That looks safe. Rook c1. Threatens mate over here. Uh-huh. All right. Gotta take the bishop. Or at least threaten to take it. Um, I guess I'll take this first. And, yeah, I don't know, man. This can't possibly work for me. Rook d2 seems to spell my demise. Um, mm -hmm. Right, I'll try to defend this absolutely hopeless position. Um... Oh, I'm going to be hanging my knight and just... Wait, no, the knight covers c1. All right, well, maybe it's not as dire as I imagined. Maybe I am chicken little on this occasion. It's kind of incredible. Wait, we have to block the pawn? Here we go. Incredible. Uh, let's take this. Hmm. Yeah, that's no good. Shit. And I lose on time. Whatever. Thanks for the game. Again, I always play with the two second increment, so the fact that I lose a lot of games in this tournament and probably lose hundreds of rating points in the process really doesn't matter because I only play with two second increment or more. This time the tournament calls to play this ridiculous time control, so I should expect to lose. And yeah. Obviously, the move quality suffers there, but the games keep moving. The crowd shouts for more. But no, the Lee Chess Marathon should have started already. So, I wonder... Um, I wonder if people do predictions on, like, who's going to win the marathon. So, it seems like... That would be something that could happen, but just probably doesn't happen. Hey, look. I finally win a game? What? Oh. They connected? That was weird. Yeah, we got the prompt that if they don't move, something's gonna happen. 
I don't know why they don't just start the clock on time. That seems kind of weird. All right, so we threaten Nate. Mm -hmm. I'll defend the queen. Knight d5, queen d8. Called it. All right. Um, I don't know how safe this is for me. Maybe they have knight c7 winning a lot of material. I probably should have like paid any attention to what we were doing there. Uh, all right, so the knight moves, bishop moves, try to get the bishop to move again. They probably play a4, they don't, we kick the bishop. Uh, sure, let's take the knight, why not? What's the worst that could happen? Um... Oh, actually, this is quite bad. Um, this is quite bad. But hey, my queen's active. <sighs> and I do have pawn d5, so, like, I'm not hanging everything on the queen's side. Um, I guess I'm threatening knight g4. Okay. Sure, why not? Materials level. We'll plug up this center of the board and attempt to target this pawn. And continue attempting to target the pawn. Um and continue continuing to attempt to target the pawn, etc. So, yeah, how many pieces can we throw at this center? Oh, they can do knight g3. They missed it, so I just win. All right, I can accept that. Yeah. Yeah, if this were like a real-life rated tournament with money and opportunity to play in other tournaments, etc. at stake, uh, I would be nervous about playing this time control. In fact, in my area, I think this weekend there's such a tournament being played at such a time control. And I'm not playing in it, because that's not the time control I play. I need some sort of increment or delay or something so that we're not just randomly shuffling pieces. It's, yeah, having this kind of situation is a bit ridiculous. If I can remove my opponent's knight, that removes a lot of their tricks that could show up in time pressure. Um, that said, they're not going to want to give me the knight. That also said, I have rook d2. So, yeah, I don't know what they do about that. I also have rook other places. Uh, let's remove the knight. Uh, I'm curious, do I take it? Or is this position so amazing that I were... No, we're just going to take it. None of this positional stuff. So, bishop h3 could defend the pawn, but does not. Oh, hang on. I know how to win this. Pretty sure I understand how to win this endgame. Pawn a3, right? Hmm. Don't mess this up. <laughs> this would be embarrassing to mess up, especially in front of a live audience. 
Hey, you know what they're trying to do is stalemate. You know what else doesn't happen here? Stalemate. Because they still have a pawn. All right. Thanks for the game. Um, yes, yeah, so I guess I could still show off, like, I've got a quote system here, I've got Phantom Bot. Some of these quotes, I mean, they're all shogi-oriented, but probably some of them could apply to chess. This one applies more to shogi than to chess. In chess, we'd say that Potser sees a check, Potser gives a check. In shogi, we say that you can't uh, checkmate the king without surrounding him first. Usually. So. Let's see. All right, I'm in fourth place. Me and my ability to win end games on time sometimes. Um, and yeah, I think these tournaments try to avoid giving repeat pairings. I don't see the Fide Master in the top ten, so apparently I'm not going to get paired with them. All right, here we go. Um, so, Bishop G5. Oh wow. All right. Already we've got a novel position on the board. Um Whoa, okay. Sure. Here we go. Let's get the real memes out here. Um That's a check. That's a check. You might have seen this one before. That's a rook. That's a knight. You might have seen this opening trap before. If you're rated like 1200 or above. That's another check. So I'm going to try to castle to safety. I debated knight a3, bishop b5 ideas, but they didn't seem to lead too far. Um, our opponent doesn't have a check. Hmm. Yeah, no, I'm just going to castle right into the thick of it. Seems kind of fun. We're playing for an audience here. If they move the bishop, I can take the knight, and it's awesome. Um, even here, I can still just bring the bishop out, defend this, bring the knight out. Maybe move the knight here instead. I don't know. Um, that looks fun. All right, we'll take it. That's checkmate. <laughs> Accidental midboard checkmate. King c5, knight b3 checkmate. Come on. They're going to let me have knight b3 checkmate? Or are they going to deny me the thumbnail shot for my video? Thumbnail shot denied. Oh well. You know, we could always use that other shot that we just had there with queen f6. That could be the video thumbnail. Oh, look, I'm in first because other people haven't finished their games yet. Uh, apparently second place. Oh, what's going on? We should see a game in progress, or at least a clock ticking. Maybe there haven't been enough seconds for this guy's clock to start ticking yet. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't know. 
But yeah, the website says you have so many seconds to make your first move, and then it starts your clock. And I wonder... I mean, no, the terminology, the verbiage there is actually clear. There's no need to revise it, because it is unambiguous. Or at least, even if it is ambiguous, it's not in a way that it affects the player's decisions. Yeah, so Rook takes g5 and king e2 as the threat. That's not king e2. Oh, well, that works. Yeah, rook e2 is just as fine. And white wins, assuming that white can move the pieces fast enough to promote pawn g3. And this should not be difficult. Pawn takes g3 probably makes things a little bit easier for white. So, yeah, white just needs to put the rook on g2 and push the g-pawn and the f-pawn and all, yeah. I guess rook c4 doesn't threaten to take anything, so white's got a free hand, and it's just going to march up the board one file at, or one rank at a time. g4 check. Probably rook e6. I don't know. Everything wins. It's not even close. g5 and rook g2 is another idea, as is this rook e5 here. Got rook e6 on the table. That should be a cheapo, rook e6, king f5, rook f6, mate. Instead, the king retreats, g6, check, repeats the cheapo, although there's no mate here, actually. Yes, you'd have to have the king on g5 already to... Or, I'm sorry, you have to, like, prevent king e5 somehow for this to be a cheapo. As it stands, you just play g7, and you're eventually going to promote. Um... Yeah, black can resign this with a clear conscience, but they'd have to wait for the next round. But this is the last game of this round, so there are three rounds remaining. I'm down by half a point against the leaders, and it feels like I'm down by way more than that. This is a really close field. Either that or all the serious players quit this tournament and have joined uh, the marathon thereby clearing space for me on the podium. Who knows? But, um... So this is 4th place versus 8th place. 4th uh, place is going to win this and eclipse me on the standings. I'm going to be in 4th next. Unless some horrific mouse slip occurs. But that's mate in 2. Mate in 1. And checkmate. There we go. I'm in 4th. I need a half a point more than the top three players. That seems really hard to get here. But I have three chances to get it. Oh, it concludes. Never mind. Yeah, the question I asked earlier uh, is now answered. So congratulations to Greenwood on their victory. Well played.